We all have our own idea of a dream house, but these days the chances of buying it may seem remote. It's a pretty looking house, isn't it? Very much the kind of thing that we'd be looking for. No, it's still really not affordable. But what if you really need more space? We use this as a sitting room, a dining room, a kitchen. It just simply doesn't work anymore with a family. Recession or not, in this series, I'm going to prove you can get more hats for less money. So you're going to try and create your dream home yes. out of your own house yep. that's as good as this, but is going to cost half the amount of money. Yeah. It is possible to double the size of your house for half the cost of moving to your dream house. If you follow some basic rules, you can get more space without breaking the bank and turn a much lesser home into the home of your dreams. We do have a big dog. The dog doesn't need a whole big wet room. It doesn't need a whole big wet room. Just by clever digging down, converting or extending, even the most modest looking property can be turned into the most spectacular dream home. I'm going to let you see into the future. Does it look a bit like this? Wow, yeah, that's just about it. Brilliant, yeah. So it's been a real motivation and a help. And think if you extend your own home, you won't have to pay stamp duty, moving costs or an unaffordable mortgage. I think you're absolutely mad to have <laughs> Such a beautiful room as a gym. We will show you the shortcuts that can save you time and money. So you saved money on the conveyor belt and you also sold the flagstones, didn't you? Yeah. So you really can end up with the home of your dreams. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. You must be so thrilled. Quite overwhelming, but yeah. homeowners, you don't have to be content with what you've got. Many modest four walls can be reshaped to adapt to changing needs and dreams. One thing I have learned over the years is that houses can be incredibly versatile. Walls can come down, ceilings can come down, you can extend in all sorts of directions. You can create your dream house and it doesn't necessarily have to break the bank. I'm on an exciting journey with two families hoping to save cash by doubling their space for half what it would cost them to buy their dream house. Oh. The Ellises in Bristol want to convert their damp basement to double the number of bedrooms and bathrooms and transform what is currently a pokey Victorian flat. One room spills out into another room which spills out into another room. In it's just a permanent mess and you just can't keep on top of it. But first, I'm off to Hinkley in Leicestershire, where the Ricketts family want to double the size of their entire house. Yay! Mark and Francesca live in a very ordinary-looking 1980s suburban detached, which, somewhat surprisingly, Francesca bought as a party pad. When I bought the house, I was sort of mid to late 20s. The type of house that I was looking for was really just somewhere to live. I didn't sort of buy it with the heart, I bought it with my head very much. All that changed when Francesca met Mark. The house was soon bursting at the seams as Mark and stacks of sports equipment moved in. We got married nearly three years ago and I think it was the next obvious step to start a family. Darcy became the motivation for us to actually do something about the house. What we're hoping to achieve is that we'll get our forever home. You might think it's impossibly expensive to double the size of your house, and it's true that the costs on big projects can go through the roof. But follow the golden rules, and you can end up with the space you want for far less money than you think. The Ricketts have been driving past their dream house every day for a year. I'm looking forward to taking a good look at it with them. Thanks very much. Hello, very nice to meet you. Hello, hello. At 2,000 square feet, their dream home is more than double the 900 square feet of their own house. What is it about this house that you feel would work really well for your family? It's big enough for the family to grow into. We like the light. It just looks like a family home. It's beautiful. I and mean, that's the type of thing that we want. It's about family lifestyle. A house like this would be worth 
say 400, probably 430,000. Yeah. In your house at the moment, how much do you think it's worth? It's 200,000. Do you have another 200,000 to be able to buy something like this? No. no. So here are the sums. To buy their dream home for £400,000, they'd need to find £200,000 extra. They only have half that budget. To me, it's a no-brainer. I know it's possible to transform their home into a huge dream home for £100,000 if they do it right. So you're going to try and create your dream home yes. out of your own house yep. that's as good as this, but is going to cost half the amount of money. Right now, the reality is a bland 1980s house that's more starter home than dream home. Downstairs, there's a living room, tunnel-like dining room and kitchen with a garage next door. Upstairs are three bedrooms and a bathroom with a separate loo. The Ricketts would like to double their house with a huge extension at the side and a further one at the back. It would be a massive transformation, but it could be done for the money if they do it right. I think one of the first things I look at here is that it's actually quite an undersized house for quite a big plot. So you'd probably be able to extend not only that, but it's got a garage and you could convert the garage to bring it into the living space of the house and probably extend on top as well. Lots of potential here. Inside, I can really empathise with just how desperate this family are for more space. So why doesn't this room work for you? It's just a really bad space. It's quite a big footprint, but this bit is just really nothing. There's nothing you can do with it apart from put the office and the study there. It's really dark. Most of the time you have to have the light on when you're in here. You're sort of, you're isolated from anybody else in the house. Francesca and I pop upstairs to see the less than glamorous place where their dream of doubling their space started. Let me introduce the blue loo. We've only got this loo. As magnificent as it is. It is fine. Yes. We wanted to have a downstairs toilet so that when Darcy was potty training, we went sort of up and down the stairs to this loo. Then that sort of was, we need a new kitchen. Oh, it'd be nice to have a utility room as well. So it started to grow and evolve. So instead of a potty, yep. you thought, we'll just double size the house instead. Yeah, that's exactly How what big a loo does she need? <laughs> Both of us would love to sort of have more children. Darcy was IVF baby. We were really, really lucky to have her and, well, become addicted to having children now. We love to have more. I think it's a bit like a box of chocolates. Once you've had one, you kind of want to finish the box. If you're going to keep on going down the IVF route, the truth is, is it, it costs a lot of money, doesn't yeah, it? That's money. why it's really, really important that we come in as near to budget as possible. Fingers crossed with the IVF, keep yes. it down on budget and yep. hopefully but it all might all come through. Yes, we'll see. That's yeah, great. great. Thank you. They'll have to spend their £100,000 very wisely if they're going to finish this project without needing to magic up more cash. Upstairs, they're planning a new family bathroom and bedroom and in the new extension, a luxury master suite. Downstairs, the kitchen and garage will be knocked through into the new extension to create an open plan living space which I think will feel absolutely huge. The first job on any budget is to weed out any unnecessary extravagances. So these are your plans of what you hope to do. Why have you got a big wet room? We do have a big dog that needs to be washed. But the dog doesn't need a whole big wet room. It doesn't need a whole big wet room, no. Maybe you're better off with a little downstairs loo and the wet room would be part of the utility room, which would be a smaller space. And then you could have a playroom here. And if you can possibly have a separate room for the children as they get older, they enjoy it and you'll enjoy it. Though they do have a £15,000 contingency, I'm not sure the best way to stick to their £100,000 budget is to have a flurry on a canine wet room. Are you confident about your budget here? Because you've only got £100,000. Would the reality be, if you go over, you can't afford the IVF? That we wouldn't go over. Full stop? Full stop. It's not happening. Change is the enemy of budget. So you need to make sure you've really got your plans nailed down before you start. Paying for IVF is the best possible reason for not going over budget. But with high-spec extras like the wet room, it's not going to be easy. A little shell-shocked when she said about not having sort of the, uh, the playroom within the actual open area. I think that is a really serious consideration to, you know, that we need to think over. I sat there thinking, 
we're going to be those people that ignore the expert. <laughs> I think you ignore her advice at your peril. For their dream home to be a dream home, they want more kids and they need IVF. And so in a way, financially, that should take the priority. While Mark and Francesca mull things over, I'm going to Bristol to meet the Ellises. Like many of us, they're not able to double their entire home, but they can get a lot more space, and they need it. We do everything in our front room. It's living room, it's dining room, it's kitchen. We've just got to a stage in life where we just can't go on in the flat as it is. Just another day living in cramped conditions. <laughs> it's not, it's just not an ideal way to live. I get caught in this struggling. But very fortunately, they have already got some extra space. Their basement. And she is ready for one last game. Although it does mean sacrificing Rob's favourite pastime. We used to host the table football competitions down here. That table has been with us for years. So it's a bit sad. But basement with a table football table or two bedrooms and a bathroom. I know which one I go for every time. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, table football table. <laughs> It would just make a huge amount of difference making these changes. It would become our dream home. Basement conversions are one of the most popular ways of extending our homes. The trick is to put your money into making sure that the space really feels like it's part of the house rather than a bit that's been bolted on. Done right, they can be great and add value to your house and your life. Done wrong and it's literally pouring money into the ground. Back in Leicestershire, Mark and Francesca are aiming to double their house with a massive two-storey extension. Aww, Aww. look at you! First job, demolishing the old garage. Mark and his mates put on their safety gear and get stuck into the demolition to save cash on labour. I am going to try and get involved in the build a bit. Oh, please, no. You know how accident prone you are. Push. Yeah. Yep. Three. Yeah. Oh my God! Every penny counts. So sensibly, these bricks will be recycled as hardcore for the patio. This was the first big milestone in the build. Was yeah. knocking this down. It's good. I feel like it started now. £100,000 for this ambitious project is tight, especially as Mark and Francesca want high-spec features like bifold doors and wet rooms. They do really need to keep on budget, though, because if they don't, their suburban dream could easily turn into a financial nightmare. I'm with two families trying to double the size of their homes for just half the cost of moving. If we succeed, they'll end up with a home of their dreams at a price they can afford. In Bristol, Rob and Beth are burrowing down to convert their basement and double their bedrooms and bathrooms for just £35,000. It's a much bigger size than the bedroom we've currently got upstairs. It's just going to be a whole lot better. Hi, Daddy. Mm. While Mark and Francesca in Leicestershire are aiming to double the size of their entire house for £100,000 instead of blowing 200,000 to move to their dream home. If you're extending like Mark and Francesca, try to match the new exterior with the old. Recycle as many materials as you can for cost and the environment, and consider your neighbors. It will help with planning permission. A month into this build and the old garage and kitchen are almost gone. next few days is um, a huge deal. I think with the steels going in, a little bit nervous. Downstairs, the garage and kitchen are being knocked through to create a luxurious open plan living space. But the vast size of this open plan means the builders must install four huge steel beams to support the weight of the house. These steels here, they need to go in. Across there, they're all going down that way, down there. And what they'll do, they'll hold all that section of the house in the air, which will allow 
it all to be knocked through, so there's one big open space downstairs. One, two, three. OK. The 22-foot-long beams are some of the largest steels you'll be likely to see used in a residential extension. One, two, three. It's also the riskiest part of this four-month project. Doubling your house is not for the faint-hearted. The whole corner of the house, the roof, the whole lot could just go down. That's it. There's a brick there. Oh. How's that, mate? There. At last, the fourth and final steel is manoeuvred safely into place. Yeah. Well, I think that's it. We are finally there. Pub time now. That really is something, isn't that? Yeah. So the house is still standing. Next up, we're talking open plan interiors. The main challenge is to divide the space up right. It's easy to build a breakfast bar or fixed units in the wrong place, but these pitfalls can be avoided by planning properly. Hi, can I go to Bishopston, please? In Bristol, Rob and Beth are also desperate for more space. They're converting their basement for just £35,000 to double their bedrooms and bathrooms. Rob and Beth live on Gloucester Road, which is an area of Bristol called Bishopston, which is known for having quite a lot of students and young people living there. Hi, hello. 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 We tried to start off with, when, we, when um, we found out Beth was pregnant, we did put the house on the market and we tried to move, um, we had a few people look around it, but we, we didn't sell it. So you could have dropped your price, obviously, but that would we have taken have you into negative Exactly, we, did, we didn't want to sell for less than we bought for. This is a situation a lot of us recognise. One thing I know for sure, they have a massive head start with all this potential. Amazing basement down here. It's brilliant. Yeah, lots of space. The Ellises have a ground floor flat with a basement. Right now, it's just a six foot high shell with blocked up doors at either end. But over three months, they plan to transform it with a master bedroom, a new bedroom for Gracie and a bathroom. How tight is the budget? Well, I mean, it is 35,000 to do up the basement, which is what we've managed to get. If you're planning a basement conversion, you'll always need building control approval, You'll always need your neighbour's agreement if there's a party wall. And check if your structure needs underpinning. It can take months and be very expensive. I think the key with a basement is to try and make it feel like it isn't in the basement. Really examine your space to see where you might be able to access natural light so your room doesn't end up feeling like a glorified cellar. So have you thought about maybe digging out a little bit further and having French doors in a little tiny courtyard out there? Would that be good? Yeah, I think, I think that'd be brilliant. Yeah. This is so exciting. Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah. This blocked up door to the front garden is a handy shortcut to get in light. One advantage you would have if you dig this out is you could have a proper little courtyard at the front. You need it to feel like it's a split-level flat and not like you've got a flat with a couple of rooms in the hole in yeah, the ground. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's easily achievable if you dig out to the front and dig out to the back and have proper ventilation and proper light coming into them. Mm. Rob and Beth's budget is only £35,000, so they need all the help they can get to save cash. First, labour costs. The existing floor has got to be lowered to increase the ceiling height. At the moment, to dig this out down here, you're talking about bagging it, presumably, carrying it up the stairs, through the flat, down those really steep stairs at the front, and out. Bingo! A perfect place to save money. They could easily use this door so soil can be carried directly out to the front garden. We could put our conveyor belts in through the doorway and do it a lot, lot quicker as well. Rob and Beth can also raise cash by selling their Victorian flagstones. What might they get for them, do you think? I'd say anything up to a couple of thousand. Very soon you're going to be paying them for this bit, basement conversion. <laughs> <laughs> this is looking amazing. 
hopefully Rob and Beth can use this saved cash to bring light in and avoid the dungeon look. Sarah's definitely given us some amazing ideas, ones that we hadn't even considered. What we thought was going to be a simple basement conversion job has now turned into a grand scale operation. So we need to decide, is, is that the path we want to take? A golden rule that can make or break a basement conversion is to get the right mix between natural and artificial light. Inspiration trips are always useful. I'm taking Rob and Beth somewhere to hopefully fill them with the ideas I don't think they yet have. The best way to achieve a basement not feeling like it's a hole in the ground under the house is to use light really, really cleverly. Mm. And there's some really good tips with this basement here, which I think will help you. First, you can make a light well by digging out a shaft beside the basement to bring natural light in. So out here, there's this amazing light well, which is terribly deep, so it enables them to have very high doors throwing light in with these grills on top. They want to give the impression of you having something outside so yes. you're not underground. Depth. Yes. I think the light wells are really worth thinking about. Oh, my God. It's also crucial to have effective artificial light in your basement. The secret is to layer several different kinds of light. One of the really good ways of making it feel like it's outside is to have two sources of light. One are the lights that you can see, and the second is lights that are hidden behind the recessed ceiling. By having a fake recessed ceiling, you're able to create the illusion of light without actually seeing the light source. The designer here has used masses of LEDs to layer the lighting and up the drama. They can be expensive to buy, but the trade-off is they're around 80% more energy efficient than other bulbs, lasting up to 100 times longer. There's LEDs within the handrail that just shine through the glass and throws the light back yeah, into the room. it kind of shimmers. We were thinking of um, just single teardrop lights, just <laughs> one in each room, but I think now having seen this basement, I think that's just not going to cut the mustard, is it? I don't think they've really thought about it at all until they came to this basement today. So hopefully they'll have got some ideas to take away which will save them a lot of money because they're going to be doing it at the right stage. For more information about extending your house or increasing your floor space, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash Sarah. In Leicestershire, Mark and Francesca aren't digging down, they're building up and out and aiming to double the size of their house. Upstairs in the extension will be a new master bedroom suite. Downstairs after six weeks, the kitchen and garage have been knocked through into the new extension to create one huge open plan living space. The build's moved on massively since I was last here and I'm so looking forward to, to being there and, and just being in the footprint of, of how the house is turning out. Because no matter how often you see architects' drawings, there is nothing quite like being there on the ground as it takes shape. Hello. Morning. How are you? Well, I'm very well. How are you? How are you doing? Hello. Hi. Maybe I'm saying, look at this, it's shut up. How amazing, isn't that great? Do you want to come and have a look? Yeah, great. I personally think this is one of the most exciting stages of a bill because quite quickly you get walls and ceilings up and you think, cool, how yeah. did that happen? Well, I can see it. This used to be two long, thin, dark rooms yeah. and look at it now. <laughs> The last of the walls comes down before this space becomes fully open plan. There'll be no house left if you leave it to me. <laughs> but I can see a problem with this space and I'd like to find them an affordable solution. I'm a little bit worried they've got rather carried away with the size of the roof light. One of the issues you do have in here is that you have got massive amounts of glass with these huge bifolding doors. The enormous roof light covering most of the roof. You haven't got much wall in here. It is a bit like living in a greenhouse. However, you can get solar reflective glass, which bounces the sun back off a bit. Without that, it's going to be flipping boiling in here in the summer. 
but none of these problems are insurmountable. They can all be fixed. I think the trick with you two is to make sure that it doesn't break the bank. The next space I'm keen to see is their living room. Mark and Francesca plan to keep this as a grown-up area, as the only separate room from their open plan. The thing about open plan space is it can be really tricky to make it work when you're actually living in it. But if you divide the space up right, you can make it work, and when you make it work, it can be a really brilliant way to live. Many people find it hard to visualise their plans on paper, but it's vital to see problems coming. So I want to show them the view from this living room back into the open plan area and kitchen, the heart of their dream. I'm going to show you a really cool gadget now, which will let you see into the future. Wow. Using the latest graphics technology, my tablet can bring their plans to life. This way, I'm hoping they'll catch any of their design mistakes early on. What we've got here is your wall. Right. And that's... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> is what it's going to look like. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. They can now see through to the play area and behind it, the kitchen. This is where I think they might be making a mistake with their breakfast bar. I've got a loathing for breakfast bars. They divide up the space in a permanent way. Yeah. And they're totally unflexible, so that's the way it's going to be forever and ever and ever. Yeah. As a parent, there's another area I'm also not sure works. This play area here is a little bit strange and random. The danger is it'll spill into all the other areas. I would move the play area into here and have this as a playroom. It means that you can turn this space into an adult space really quickly. What yeah. do you think of that? Yeah, yeah super. Nice. In Bristol, it's crunch time. The Ellis's have finalised their plans and have scraped together all the money they can get their hands on. In terms of the budget we've got to make this, we're looking at sort of 30,000, which we've had to remortgage that, the flat to get, and another 5,000 has been given to us by my dad. A £35,000 conversion is just doable, if they do it right. If Rob and Beth succeed and spend wisely, they'll get a bright, spacious new bedroom for Gracie, an extra bathroom and a light-filled master bedroom. Meanwhile, some cash-saving plans are taking action. The builders have taken up the flagstones while the floor is lowered to give more headroom. And they're unblocking the old door at the back to create a courtyard and are saving labour costs by shifting the earth directly out to the front garden. But are there any nasty surprises lurking in their Victorian basement? There's no dead bodies in there, though, on the positive. with two families aiming to save lots of cash by changing a modest four walls into their dream homes. Yeah. The Ricketts are spending £100,000 instead of the massive £200,000 it would cost to buy a bigger home. Wow. They've blended the exterior of the new extension with the main house. And boy, three months on, the inside is unrecognisable. At 650 square feet, I have a slight fear this space could end up feeling like an aircraft hangar. But one thing I do know is that there are some clever tricks to avoid this that don't cost much. I think the thing about open plan space is it can work incredibly well, but it can get a little bit out of hand. So I've brought you here because there's lots of clever solutions to how you define the space here, that being a very important issue to deal with at this stage rather than right at the end. Yes. Wow. Wow. The key is to zone the areas clearly, so each area has a specific purpose. So this double height here has this fantastic sense of space, yeah. and I think this is pretty similar to your roof light, but they've reflected the table underneath but they've brought the lighting down so that they've lowered the height of the ceiling so you can have an intimate dinner but have this sense of space upstairs. Mm. The other way of defining those spaces is with the textured wall, which is a focal feature for this part of the room. So instead of just having white walls all the way around, this very much feels like this is the sitting area because yeah. yeah. that's the feature for this bit. Part of the family could be in here 
part of the family could be in the kitchen without too much disruption into mm. what each other's doing. I think with the use of height and the use of floor coverings and the use of wall coverings, those three things can create rooms within the space. I think it's a great demonstration of what you can achieve. Yeah, and it's not going to break the bank, which is exactly what we want. It's fantastic. The driving factor behind Mark and Francesca's £100,000 extension is to have space for their family. Oh, well done. Come on then. I think the house will be a welcome distraction from the IVF. And I think the IVF will be a welcome distraction from, from the house. The stakes with this huge build couldn't be higher. Obviously, with going through IVF, um, it costs. And if we overspend, then we can't do IVF. It, it's quite simple. They've added more pressure to their budget with high-spec features like the huge roof lantern and bifolding doors. I'm really worried they're going to sail way over. They're already burning into their £15,000 contingency fund, and after that's gone, that's it. The budget itself is not looking brilliant at the moment. We're basically at the upper end of our sort of contingency. We need to be careful because I don't want either of us to be in that situation where it sort of it goes horrifically wrong and we end up sort of having to stop the build because there is no more money. It's halfway through this four-month build and the underfloor heating is being installed for the open plan. Mark's keen that the heat pump is eco-friendly. Good afternoon. Yeah, How are you? Am. Mark. Drizzling again. But installation costs £8,000, twice what's in the budget. It's quite an expensive system to install. Probably double the cost of putting in a conventional gas boiler. But obviously the, the payback is is enormous and will be for the for the years to come. So obviously I need to discuss this with Francesca. I can sympathise with Mark about the long-term financial and environmental benefits, but a £4,000 overspend has far greater implications for this family. How'd you get on? Very good. Apart from the initial capital outlay, I can't see a reason why everybody doesn't do it. So what's the capital outlay then for it? about seven or eight thousand. Wow. We, we can't afford this. We cannot afford what we're doing now, let alone stick more money on it. <laughs> there isn't the money. Okay. From a selfish point of view, would I prefer to have um, a sort of a bigger family or a green version of heating system. I go on the sort of um, on the family route on that one. But Mark's determined to continue his search. You're investigating green things, aren't you? I am That's investigating them. green things. It's just a big chunk of money that you need to find at the beginning. I mean, that is the major, major problem with all green issues. If it didn't hit your back pocket, everyone yeah, would yeah, do yeah. anything. But it's really difficult choice. to justify. For right or wrong, it's more expensive. That's been the one single disappointment. I don't think you should give up on your ideals, and I think they're laudable and they're brilliant. But if you possibly can, I would look for the cheaper option of the green solution wherever you can. It's so easy to get carried away and overspend. A golden rule for keeping on budget is always ask yourself what you'll have to give up to afford the little extra that you want. For more information about extending your house or increasing your floor space, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash Sarah. Crystal Rob and Beth's basement is being damp proofed. So what we're doing, we're actually fitting a membrane system. Here's a piece of the membrane. It's made of polypropylene and it simply goes up against the wall. Fitted with these plugs here which have got a seeding ring around them so there's no moisture can come through there. Any moisture coming through the wall just simply runs down behind it into the drainage channel which runs round to a sump and then it's pumped out. 
you could in fact fill this up with water and use it as a swimming pool. That is how waterproof it is. Next door in Gracie's bedroom, unblocking the whole of the old door to make a courtyard would require underpinning. So they've gone for an ingenious alternative. I'm in and have a seat. This mirror shaft system will bounce natural light down into the basement and is a compact solution that's relatively easy to install. So we're going to take that as our external top position yeah. of the mirror shaft cover. Happy? Yeah. Good. The light problem in Gracie's bedroom may be sorted, but now there's news that means it's more important than ever to get this basement finished. We've got some unexpected news, which is that we are expecting another baby. It's a bit, a bit of a surprise, but it's a good, nice surprise. Definitely need more space now. I first met Rob, Beth and Gracie two and a half months ago, and now their ambitious build on just £35,000 is almost finished. With the major jobs of lowering the floor and underpinning complete, the rest of the conversion has progressed very quickly. I'm really excited about seeing the Ellis's basement conversion finished. It was so important to Rob and Beth that they doubled the number of bedrooms and doubled the number of bathrooms and freed up living space. Hi, Hi. hello. Good to see Good you to again. See you. <laughs> two and a half months ago, Rob and Beth's flat had two bedrooms and a kitchen in the living room. Now the living room doesn't have to house the kitchen, there's a separate room for it next door. But the real success was spending only £35,000 creating two more bedrooms and a bathroom in the converted basement. Goodness, what a transformation! How amazing! This first bedroom was nothing more than a damp cellar, only fit for table football. But Rob and Beth have worked wonders to turn it into a dry, light-filled master bedroom. You've got a little door out into a courtyard here. Yeah, yeah it's good, isn't it? That's worked brilliantly. It tricks the eye, it creates the illusion of the fact you're on the ground floor. Mm. It transforms this from being a cellar into a lower ground floor. It does make quite a difference being able to walk out there. Rob and Beth decided to shift earth out of this door, which saved them £1,600 in labour costs. So you saved money on the conveyor belt and you also sold the flagstones, didn't you? We got about £1,200. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Now, you've used a lot of different forms of lighting down here, haven't you? Mm. And being able to control light is absolutely key when you're effectively living with artificial lighting. Mm. You've done a really good job down here doing that. and and doing it in an affordable way, so you know, hats off to you. It's exactly what, exactly what we wanted. I'm looking forward to seeing Next Door. Yeah. Next Door, what was the other half of the dank basement? Is now a light, bright bedroom for Gracie. Amazing light well, that just looks so brilliant. I'm amazed how much light it, it lets in. Even if it's an overcast day, that ref the mirror shaft reflects yeah. light back in really well. So simple, really, it's just like a periscope, isn't yeah. it, effectively? Rob and Beth have done a brilliant job. The flat looks great. But have they managed to double their space for half the cost of moving to that dream home? To sell up their £190,000 flat and move to a home of this size, they'd have had to find another £70,000. But by converting their basement, they've ended up with the space they need for just half of that. Rob and Beth have managed to turn their rather damp and dark cellar into a proper lower ground floor. So they've done a really fantastic job and this should be able to be a happy home for them and their growing family now for years to come. <laughs> Four months ago, Mark and Francesca took on a hugely ambitious project to double the size of their house on a budget of £100,000. 
change is the enemy of budget, so you need to make sure you've really got your plans nailed down before you start. We wouldn't go over. To get the space they wanted meant risky and complex structural work. The whole corner of the house, the roof, the whole lot could just go down. For Mark, one of the biggest challenges has been balancing their budget and the cost of going green. But fortunately, he's managed to find one green solution that will heat their hot water without burning their budget. These solar panels cost around £1,700 and will cut their bills by up to a third. It's taken four months for the Ricketts to double the size of their house with a massive two-storey side extension. There's no doubt the new exterior looks amazing, right down to the decorative wood cladding. But the inside was always going to be the biggest challenge. Have they got it right? There's an awful lot at stake with Mark and Francesca's project. Not only have they doubled the size of their house and ended up with a vast open plan space, which if they've got it wrong, is gonna look a bit like an aircraft hangar. I'm also really worried about their budget because any money they have gone over could dash their dreams of any more IVF. Hello. Hi. Hello, how are you? Hi. Horrible day. <laughs> Four months ago, Mark and Francesca's house looked very different. The main living space was little more than a series of long, narrow, cramped rooms with very little light. But now they've transformed their ground floor by knocking through the wall between the kitchen and the old garage and building a side extension to create one huge open plan space. Now look at that. Gosh, how wonderful. It really works, doesn't it? This is a really great open plan space. We love it. It's beautiful. So you've now got these zone spaces, haven't you? And yeah. the most important thing when you're defining a big open plan space is to define which bits you're going to use for what. So having two lights above the dining room table clearly makes that a separate space. And having the island and the lantern above clearly defines this space as the kitchen breakfast room. When you took us to that lovely house and we saw the, the wall that they got featured there with sort of the texture, we wanted to steal that idea and then have the feature wallpaper to sort of make this more of a, a living room area. You've done a fantastic job. It looks amazing. Thank you. Thank you. We're delighted. I think very wisely they decided to give their daughter Darcy her own playroom in what was the old living room instead of a space in the middle of the open plan area. So this is this is your playroom is it Darcy? Yeah. Oh, what a lovely room for her, yes, though. Yes, absolutely. Any toys in the main space, you can just chuck in here. And if this is a mess, it doesn't matter, just shut the door. It's fine, yeah. isn't it? So you're glad it's this way around yes, now? Yes, totally. I can't even imagine what it would have been like if we'd have had it in that open plan space. What about the wet room for the dog? Let's go and show you what we've done. <laughs> Let's go through it. Ah, so you did. You we decided did. you needed a full-on wet room. The wet room is part of an amazing downstairs bathroom, so the dog doesn't mess up the house. The dog, fresh from his muddy walk, can come through the door and go straight in and not make our beautiful house a mess. Considering the whole of this project started just because you wanted a downstairs loo, do you not think this might be teeny weeny bit extravagant? I love it. <laughs> Upstairs, remodelling and extending has given them a new family bathroom and Mark and Francesca a luxurious master suite. I can't help but be impressed. The house looks great. But have they managed to double their space for half the cost of moving to that dream house? So back at the beginning of this project, we saw a house that was your dream house. Whilst it was on the market for 420,000, it would have cost you 250,000 pounds to move to it. How much did this project end up costing? 
£100,000 plus £15,000 contingency, so £115,000. So do the sums work? They couldn't afford the £250,000 needed to move to a dream house. But by spending just £115,000 on this build, they've doubled the size of their own home for less than half the cost of moving. And I've got more good news. I would be incredibly surprised if you didn't get 350 for this if you came to sell it because it really is exceptional. That does mean that you've got £35,000 of security in your home. We could do another one. No. <laughs> <laughs> but for Mark and Francesca, this build has never been about making money. You had two dreams, didn't you? The dream of the house that you live in with you and Darcy, and your other dream, which is for a bigger family as well as a bigger house. We've but... feathered the nest, so let's just say. Your savings part for your IVF is still safe still and safe. secure. Still yeah. safe and secure. So you now double the house and you're going to double the family. Absolutely. Yes. Like, too right. <laughs> <laughs> this is a total triumph. Mark and Francesca have created a dream house that's beautiful, homely, with not a hint of aircraft hanger about it. And by staying totally focused, they've managed to stay on budget. I only hope they manage to get their dream family, but however that plays out, one thing's for sure, this is a story that already has a very happy ending. Next time, I'm with Lindsay as she moves on with her house and her life. This is about new beginnings, isn't it? It's exciting, scary. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. And the Croft Baker's dream of doubling their space doesn't come up smelling of roses. Oh, I've just got a whiff. <laughs> it was disgusting. <laughs>